Joining us now, the ranking member of the House Intelligence Committee, Democratic Congressman Adam Schiff of California. Congressman, thanks so much for joining us. You bet. Good to be Very with you. curious development today. The chairman of your committee, Devin Nunes, he wrote a scathing letter to the Attorney General Jeff Sessions last week, the letter uh, threatening to hold Sessions and the FBI Director Christopher Wray in contempt of Congress if they don't hand over documents related to that so-called dossier compiled by a former British intelligent agent. The dossier contains allegations uh, about Trump's personal and financial life. Uh, as you know, Chairman Nunes removed himself from the Russia investigation. Why is he doing this now? Well, he shouldn't be. This has been a continuing issue. Uh, the chairman, when he recused or stepped aside, should have delegated the authority, as our rules permit, to Mr. Conaway, but he was unwilling to do so. Uh, so he still formally issues subpoenas. Uh, he also uh, evidently writes letters to the Department of Justice and the FBI taking issue with their production, uh, which is also something, frankly, I don't understand. And we raised as an issue with the majority when they said they wanted to subpoena the department, and that is we hadn't even sent them a written request, a voluntary request for the information. And our practice has been we request voluntary compliance. It's only when uh, they refuse that we issue a subpoena. They departed from that practice here. Um, it seems like they want to discredit Mr. Steele and also discredit the FBI's investigation. I don't know what's to be gained by that. Honestly, it doesn't bring us any closer to figuring out what the Russians did and how they did it. Uh, so we don't agree with what they did, uh, and I think it's an unfortunate distraction. Well, do you believe uh, Chairman Nunes really is uh, going to hold uh, the, the FBI director, the attorney general, in contempt? No, I don't. And, uh, you know, the, the threat to bring uh, the attorney general before our committee in an open hearing, I would welcome that. Bring him in. Uh, there are a lot of questions I would like to ask the attorney general. I can't imagine they would actually fall through with that, but uh, frankly, I'd be delighted if they did. Have you spoken with Chairman Nunes about this? Uh, you know, we don't discuss the Russia investigation because he purportedly recused himself from it. He really shouldn't play a role in it. Uh, so I confine my discussions uh, on that to Mr. Conway and the other members who are working on but it. But if he recused himself or removed himself from the Russia investigation, why is he writing these kinds of letters? Uh, he shouldn't be. He shouldn't be. And uh, only he can explain why he is taking that role. The, it's, a, it's a very, very serious development. Uh, another statement coming out from Facebook today, uh, it said that they sold about $100,000 of advertisements to what they call inauthentic accounts operated out of Russia during the campaign. Uh, Facebook says uh, they've shared this inf information with investigators. Are you concerned that these ads may have deliberately targeted voters in some of those key swing states? Uh, you know, this is information that we're trying to gather. Uh, from what I understand, and I've only gotten a preliminary briefing about this, uh, Facebook's conclusion is that most were not geographically targeted, although some were. Uh, and among those that were, we need to find out why and on what subjects. Uh, and were they at a level of sophistication where they would have needed help or assistance from the campaign? Uh, those are unanswered questions that we want to get to the bottom of. Um, we, I think, already knew uh, the Russians were using paid social media trolls uh, to try to influence the election, try to sow discord. This certainly confirms that finding. Uh, but we want to explore, not only with Facebook, with other social media platforms as well, uh, what evidence, to what degree. Uh, 100,000 may seem like it's not a huge amount, but at the same time, that's millions of people uh, seeing or, or liking or passing on uh, this information, and that can be influential. That's a, that's a lot of well, money. Are you concerned that that may just be the tip of the iceberg? There are other, uh, that there were other operations involving Russians uh, in, in the U.S. presidential election? Well, this is just one platform. Uh, we need to find out what is the evidence with respect to other social media platforms like Twitter, for example. What kind of internal analyses have these other companies done? Um, were there things that they missed earlier on when they didn't believe that this activity had necessarily occurred? Uh, so we do have a lot of questions. Uh, Facebook, I think, has been very cooperative with us. Uh, but still, uh, there's a lot we need to uh, press on this. Another significant development unfolding. We learned what last week that the president, uh, President Trump's personal lawyer, Michael Cohen, asked the Kremlin for help potentially with developing a Trump Tower hotel development in Moscow during the campaign last year. It never, it never wound up happening. But uh, as you know, at the time, uh, Donald Trump always repeatedly denied he had no business dealings uh, with the Russians. How do these revelations affect, if they do, your investigation? Well, you know, they certainly raise additional concerns because uh, now we know that the Trump organization was pursuing business in Russia 
a business that would effectively have to be approved by Putin. At the same time, the campaign was taking a very pro-Russia, pro-Putin policy. Was this being guided by their financial interests? Uh, and why did the president uh, um, make false statements about his financial interests in doing business in Russia at a time when he was pursuing that? Um, that also means that we can't accept any representations coming from the president or his organization about whether the Russians have done business with him in the past. Uh, among the chief concerns I have is the issue of money laundering. If the Russians had been engaged in business with the Trump Organization and some of that business uh, was illicit, like money laundering, that would be the most powerful well, explain form explain that of money laundering issue. Uh, what do you mean by that? Well, real estate is a very convenient way to launder money. Uh, and if there was a time when the Trump Organization found it difficult to borrow from uh, banks uh, and responsible financial institutions and had to turn elsewhere and there was a marrying of interest between the Trump Organization and the Russians who have historically needed to launder huge amounts of money uh, and they did business together in that way that is far more compromising than any salacious video would be uh, so in our national interest we need to make sure did this happen did it not happen if it did it means the Russians have continuing leverage over the president of the United States. Well, do you know uh, right now whether or not there was this kind of money laundering that was going on? Uh, you know, this is the subject of investigation. I think we need to try to figure out whether this occurred. Uh, if it did, we need to be able to tell the American people about it. Uh, if it didn't, we need to be able to tell the American people about it. I also think this is something that Bob Mueller is uniquely capable of ascertaining. He has a lot of resources to devote to this uh, and expertise among his staff uh, that we simply don't have in Congress. Has this changed at all your scope of the investigation that your committee, the House Intelligence Committee, is undertaking? Well, you know, we continue to have internal discussions about the scope of our investigation. Uh, I certainly think that uh, this could be uh, an area of uh, the Russian active measures campaign and as such very much within the scope of our investigation. Uh, and something that I think would be negligent for us uh, not to get to the bottom of. Uh, President Obama's national security advisor, Susan Rice, met with your committee uh, earlier today behind closed doors. What, if anything, can you tell us about that meeting? Uh, you know, we don't usually go into the context of our closed meetings. So we allow the witnesses uh, uh, to discuss it if they wish. Uh, the most I can say is that uh, she was completely forthcoming with us, uh, answered every question we had. I think everyone was quite satisfied with uh, her testimony in our closed session. Uh, one final question before I let you go, Congressman. The Justice Department revealed the other day uh, that there was, uh, there's no evidence that President Obama ordered the wiretapping of Trump Tower during the campaign. Remember the allegation that was leveled by Donald Trump at the time. Uh, what, what do you make of that uh, revelation coming out right now? Well, it ought to be the definitive exclamation point after Comey testified to that and Rogers testified to that. Uh, and everyone else who has been asked uh, that was in the intelligence community has essentially said the same thing. No evidence behind the president's uh, baseless claim. Uh, but that claim lives on in a different way. It lives on in the form of an unmasking inquiry that's being done. Uh, the suggestion now is, okay, maybe there wasn't deliberate wiretapping of Trump Tower. Maybe the president got that wrong. But somehow there was backdoor surveillance through unmasking. Uh, so unfortunately, that, tr that tweet lives on, I think, uh, uh, in a way that it should have been put to rest a long time ago.